it's Hillary with Lazy Lima DIY, my little crafty corner of the YouTubes. And today we are um, sewing and we're gonna be making this adorable little hedgehog, little pin cushion. Just look, look, look how it works right there. Woo! And then you stick the little pin cushions in and that becomes his little hedgy uh, quills. But anyway, uh, how I got started with this is, um, Every year, Stampington and Company uh, does a magazine sale, and you can get magazines anywhere from like, and they're normally fourteen ninety nine or something like that, and you can get them for uh, as little as ninety nine cents, uh, up to I think like seven ninety nine is the highest. But every year I go through and I and I try to get a few. Um, and so uh, at the start of quarantine, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do something from one of these magazines? And um, <laughs> I found these hedgehogs, little hedgehog pin cushions. Aren't they adorable? And there's the author's name. It's by Ian and Mary Holes. Uh, and look at his little face. Is that not the most adorable thing? And then... Uh, they give you good pictures. You can uh, see he has a little tail there. Um, and here is the bottom of him. And uh, that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, I read the article. It's all about this, you know, they make these, they sell them on, on eBay. and um, Or not eBay, I'm sorry. They sell them on Etsy. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, that'll be a cute little project. And... You know mine is a little different see this is not as big it doesn't cover and my my little hedgehog is not as fat uh, but you can just overstuff him and he'll become fatter um, especially because I did mine out of a knit instead of a, uh, a wool uh, is shown but the process oh <laughs> so I was like okay well let's do let's do the hedgehog and uh, so I get to, you know, I read the little story and find out about how they make these things and how, you know, they, they customize them and how they sell them all over the world and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I get to technique. Here is the technique, which I will read to you exactly. It says, draw a pattern onto cardboard, cut out, and trace onto upcycled wool. And I looked in the magazine, looked at the back. Uh looked all over and could not find uh, a pattern. And they give you, it gives you like their website, their Etsy shop, their blogs, and I could not find a pattern. So I was kind of a little cheesed off because I'm like, what's the point in having it in the magazine then? That's what Pinterest is for. Um, so I set about trying to figure out uh, having a pattern. And the weird thing about it is, you know, if they had put the pattern, they, they, they would have had like copyright information on it. But because I have put together my own pattern and my little guy looks way different than theirs. Um, and now I can offer it to you for free. But anyway, here's my process. This was my first one. And I can't remember the name of the rat in, in Charlotte's web, but that's what it looks like to me. And I, you know, stitched it up and I thought, hey, you know, it looks like a rat. But maybe once I put the eyes and the nose on there and I did that with some dimensional paint just to get an idea. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it just looks now like a rat with eyes and, and nose. Uh, then next, I got a fat little hedgehog here because uh, I noticed, you know, that I showed you he kind of had that moon thing. And uh, I'm sorry, these first two I just did out of the same fabrics. But um, look at that. That's like almost completely lined up and not even trying. Um, but you can't see like his face doesn't come out like that little moon. But here you can kind of see that it does. And there's like a sharp curve here. And that's probably... Uh, my preference, but getting this to, I hate stitching in a curve. And I'm, I'm actually, you know, you know, now that I think about it, I'm actually kind of pleased with him. Uh, I put his little paint eyes on, uh, maybe his nose is a little long, but, um, oh, and he's stuffed with a ball of yarn because uh, none of these are closed up. 
Then next, I thought I would expand upon this, um, and then I did this one. And uh, you can see I had a problem because this one is this side is upside down um, when I stitched them together. So, uh, but I, I decided I didn't like the wool. Uh, this is wool, and this is like a poly blend or cotton or something. Um, and I didn't bother stuffing him because, yeah. Uh, the next one I came up with, uh, whoops, is I thought I'm going to try to cheat on the getting the face because stitching in that uh, curve was just labor intensive. And I can't believe, you know, and I'm thinking they can't stitch in that curve all the time every day because it's just like so fiddly um, and tiny. Um, so I thought I'm going to try to get this little kind of moony look, but I'm going to try to do it with more of an angle. So instead of cutting such a sharp curve, I cut a slight angle. And I think that's good because look at that face. You can see the line there. It gives you that moon sort of look. This part, however, was too fat. Looks like an ant eater. Uh, and especially in proportion to the body, it's off. So uh, my final one, uh, that I kept the pattern to. This is it. And unfortunately, I made this way too large. So we're gonna have to pop it off of there. And they stitch it on in the in the sample or in the magazine. And I just glued mine on and I made this way too big. Um, I thought it was gonna smush down. So that's why when I even when I put it on there, it was like, oh, no, it's gonna smush down and it'll be, you know, like this. Um, but this was just my trial. So I wasn't trying to match up the color or anything. So uh, as you can see, I've got my stitched on eyeballs here, and uh, I think he looks kind of cute. Uh, they're a little wonky, and I, I like that. And I did this out of a knit fabric, and this is also a knit. Um, in the one we're going to do, we're just going to use this fabric and this fabric. Uh, we're not going to use the, the cotton because, I don't know. Uh, I kind of think the nose is a little ant eatery, so I might uh, shunt it off about there. This is what <laughs> this these are all of our patterns. <laughs> this is this is what we uh, were working with. Um, who knows what that is? I even wrote a question mark in it, but it's so like perfectly curved. I even used like my French curve to get the right curve, but um, this is similar to the pattern piece that we're going to be using, um, and I will hopefully come up with a good looking pattern that I can uh, post online here so you can make your own. But uh, I've cut out the nose and now I'm going to cut out uh, the body. And uh, I have a little piece of cardboard that I've drawn my oval on. I'm gonna need a needle and thread and some beads to make the eyes. And that's it. So let's get started. Okay, so um, I've already cut out the little nose piece and you can see I've made this like a little longer and I'm just going to cut this like a little uh, sharper. But as you can see here, it kind of goes up a bit. Um, so that was what I uh, found to be the most pleasing for me. Your mileage may vary. Um, and we're just going to cut this out. And I like kind of giving the tail end just a little bit of a curve. And then up. And you can save these little scraps. They're good to do the stuffing with if you don't have fiber fill. Um, so let's just take out our pins and see what we have. So those are our pieces and that's how they fit together. So this side uh, here, if you accidentally get them turned upside down, just remember that this side is a little longer and it fits right in there. And what I did was um, the best way for me to line this up because I was at first doing the nose piece together and then uh, the body pieces together and then I was stitching them together but actually it works best to sorry have right sides together there and we're just going to pin that
one of the pins over there. Why don't we do that that way? Sometimes, Hillary, you just make things more difficult than they need to be. And then I make sure that I put a pin right in the corner and then I can kind of bring these two edges up together and pin them in. And usually it's like one pin and that one I kind of cross. So here it all looks like, yeah, that's perfect. Here it looks like, well, we're gonna end up with a dimple. But as we sew, we're just going to uh, finagle that into place. So we're gonna do the other side here now. And there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to stitch right up here and um, I give it about like a 3 eighths of an inch clearance. Um, so we're just going to stitch that and um, you can also do this by hand. Um, you don't need a sewing machine. So we'll be back when we have those stitched together. I stitched up here and then I gave it a very soft uh, needle in pivot. Uh, so you can kind of see there's, it's a corner, but it's a very soft corner. And then I just kind of stretched and moved this fabric out of the way so I wasn't stitching over, you know, a nub of fabric there. And so when you do this, it actually comes out nice and, and sort of flat. And it doesn't need to be absolutely flat because our hedgehog is three dimensional. So we're just going to snip our threads and now we're ready to pin him together okay so I line up the seams here and then I put a pin and usually when I go over a seam I put the pin in sort of at an angle because I'm going to be stitching from about here all the way around just to the tail So, this keeps wanting to curl up, so let's just put your pin right there, Hedge, Hedgy, Mr. Hedgy. Okay, so uh, I made sure that my scenes lined up, and uh, that is like entirely too many pins, that's making me crazy. Um, <clears throat> And then my seam pins, they're just like at a slight slant um, and I'll remove them when I get to sewing. And I'm going to start here and do the nose and up around the body and end curving around this little tail part. So let's go do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've done our stitching and we're just gonna clip our threads much easier <laughs> using the full scissors and uh, I made a mistake and my nose it actually ended up pointy um, so normally I would trim this edge but I'm going to use the fabric that's in here when I turn it inside out I'm going to use that to to make the nose a little bit of a softer point and we're just going to flip this inside out And if you need to use something sharp to get that point, and then there you go. There's your little hedgy. He's cute, huh? Okay, that's funny. I thought I had a bundle of fiber fill in the corner and it was just a bundle of this um, quilt batting. Uh, so I was like, oh yeah, now we get to use the actual fiber fill. Um, I'm sure I have some, but it's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, anyway, uh, what I was doing is just peeling that off. and making that into uh, nice soft little bits there. And then I kind of roll it up and we start with the nose. And this is gonna fill really well because this, is, this fabric is knit. Um, however, uh, we are gonna wanna make sure that it's smooth 
I've rolled up my fiber fill or my batting I should say and uh, I'm just using a paintbrush end to get the nose shape but I don't want the nose to be as fat as that so we're gonna take some of that uh, filling out we're just gonna manipulate it and now we want to make sure that we get him nice and fat so we're just going to tear off our batting and roll it and this is where we can use our scraps so I have this scrap um, I don't necessarily want it to be like if I just put the scrap in by itself it would probably be kind of bumpy uh, but if I wrap it in the batting I can get my fat little hedgy and during this we're kind of gonna pull him out pull that filling out toward the edge can you see that I'm doing that and so uh, as I'm filling it up it'll go into the center and it will pudge him out a bit much like me in the quarantine uh, here is some more fabric and we're just going to wrap that uh, some batting around that sometimes you know if you've never done like a plush and you're like that does looks like way too much batting go ahead and give it a try because you want it to be this is the one I think I filled out most successfully and this is the one with the yarn um, because I was just looking for the basic shape you know until I came upon the pattern that I like uh, so here's what he looks like so far he's a little bumpy but he's a little chubby uh, we're gonna even him out we're gonna push some more uh, of the batting up to the front uh, here there doesn't seem to be enough and it's it's got a bit of a bend to it so let's make that a little stronger and there we go so uh, the way you kind of know it's done is you just look at it and see if it looks like a hedgehog to you I like these different sizes. I might actually uh, <laughs> fill him up because um, he's a he's nice and large. But these ones, uh, I think the ones in the magazine, the the noses end like right around here, or they're they're sharper. Um, but I was happy with this. I'm happy with this look. I just want him to be just a little fatter. So now that I'm fine-tuning his shape I'm gonna use smaller bits of filling and I can kind of mush it around to where I want and uh, see this part right here it's I don't know if you can tell here it's almost flat so let's get a little more fill in that and round that out so now uh, I have my little hedgehog. We're gonna stick some pins in him. Yeah, where he hits the fat, where the pin hits the fabric, it's a little bit of a tougher sell, but that still works. I'm okay with that. So now I have this end here. I'm gonna sit our little fat hedgehog on the cardboard, and we're gonna find a pen and just sort of give us a little shape there so that we know what we have. We're going to use our paper scissors and I would kind of cut uh, to the inside of this line I'm going to show you in the picture again what the bottom looks like. Uh, here it is. And 
uh, it's definitely more round. And then you kind of see here how the shape of the, the nose comes out. Um, and the nose is definitely a little thinner. Um, I'm going to have to work on that nose uh, if I ever do this again, which is highly unlikely. Uh, but there we go. We have a nice bottom that uh, doesn't show there. And now we're just going to take our fabric that we cut and misplaced. Good job. So there. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Fabrifix glue. And glue this down. You don't want too much glue. This glue holds really well. I want to make sure it's a thin layer. So I'm going to come close to the corner here so I can uh, kind of see if I can get a tail. And then I'm going to use my scissors. Whoa! I cut that too close to the corner there. And uh, because I'm going around a corner edge, or I'm sorry, because I'm going around a curve, I'm just gonna give it little slices here so that when I glue it, it'll be completely flat around. And starting at one end, and I just like to do a little bit of glue and then bring that down, bring the next one down. You kind of need octopus hands here. And there's the third one. And then I use one of these little clips and I clip it down, especially if you're using a knit fabric like I am because it does not want to stay. Here's where I was really uh, chintzy on getting <laughs> the edges cut. So we're going to use the uh, fabric to our advantage. And we're just going to stretch and clip. Stretch and clip, stretch and clip. And now we're here to the tail. So what we want is, is for it to curl in like this. So let's bring this one over and then bring this end in closer. Oops, a little too much glue there, but that's okay. And then that makes a little tail. Whoops. And now this can dry. So the next step is to put on our eyeballs. You know, I always hate hand sewing at the beginning, but then once I start it, it's like I find it very meditative. And you can use this single or double. I'm gonna use it single. I mean, unless you're really hard on your stuff, then maybe you wanna do double. <laughs> but I have some, some little I guess they're still seed beads. Uh, I forgot what size these are. Maybe nines? No. Tens? Elevens? Somewhere around there. I could just keep saying numbers. I don't know what size they are. We're going to thread on our seed bead and then we're just going to make it stand up on its end. Oh, I hate when this happens. When I don't pay attention and then it gets all boogity. So you see there, his eye is standing on end, and uh, this is the angle that you can see. Uh, can you see the hole at? So it looks solid from certain angles. You can see on this one, I used the same white bead, but because um, uh, I wanted to, I, I felt like it, that was a little too much. I used the black bead in the center, so like as a pupil, um, and he looks a little cross-eyed, uh, which gives him sort of an adorable look to him. 
and uh, we're just going to stitch and then I've stitched it through twice that's fine for me uh, and then I'm going to pull it through to the other side and I'm going to try to eyeball it and and you know get to the same place and then I'm going to pull it so I'm kind of making a little indent uh, with the eye there and we're going to add our bead we're going to stitch it in place. So now I have eyes on my little hedgehog. He looks like an anteater or a dodo bird. I don't know. He doesn't really look like a hedgehog. Use your imagination. It's a hedgehog, okay? Now uh, we're going to knot it again at the bottom. seam thread. We're just going to make this a little tidier on the bottom uh, and I don't start all the way here at the end. I just um, kind of go here and make a loose running stitch. And you can see I'm not going like at the edge. I'm kind of folding the end over. And I'm doing that because I want uh, I want this to stay in place and not uh, burst out the edges. I had this friend a while back who could look at any pattern and figure out how to do it. It was such a amazing gift. I mean, from anything from like uh, you know a complicated bead. Um, you know, structure to, you know, patterns to tatting. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm tucking, I'm making sure all my filling is tucked in. And you can see like that the little bottom here, it just comes in a little more. So if I let go, it's out here. But now, and he becomes just a little squatter and fatter and I'm just finishing off the end there just making it look nice it's covered so you don't have to do that um, and we're gonna put our knot in whoops and our knot and there we go Okay, so uh, this is dry now, so we're just going to take off our clips. And here's our, oh, our little tail got a little off. And we are going to check him out and see that he's still in the right place and he is so uh, back to the glue and like I said you could just take this and uh, stitch this all the way around if you want but I don't want so we are going to glue and you don't want to glue all the way to the end uh, but you want to make sure that you cover the fabric so if you glue all, to, all the way to the end, you're going to have glue on the end of your little hedgy. But, uh, we're going to try to get our hedgy tail in the right place. And we're going to munch together. And we're going to look and see if there are any edges that are not uh, adhering. Um, I tried putting... Um, uh, rubber bands around it and it just sort of mis made him sort of misshapen so uh, I think uh, using my hand because it kind of squashes him out makes him a little chubby and yeah there we go so it doesn't look precisely like uh, the <laughs> the one in the magazine I believe this part is a little fatter um, and I just you know the nose is sort of there. 
it does sort of look like a rat. <laughs> um, but let's put some pins in it and see. They have their pins like all artfully arranged in the hedgehog and I'm like, that's not how I manage my pins. But And I thought, you know, uh, this would be a cool thing to uh, put some Velcro on the bottom here and then uh, Velcro that to my sewing machine so that uh, I always have a little pin cushion there on my sewing machine. Oops. I never want my pins to stick out quite this much. It's like I'm further in. So they stick out and you brush against it and the next thing you know you got pins on the floor. But he works. He's a pin cushion. And look at his little face. It's adorable. Uh, Greencraft magazine. I guess uh, the green part is you. Well, it's not really green. I mean, look how much stuff I use trying to copy their pattern. Where if they'd just given me the pattern in the first place, <laughs> it'd have been more of a green craft <laughs> because I wouldn't have had to do it 900 ways and, you know, throw these all away. I think he's cute. All my little hedgies and my, oh gosh, I almost had it. Was it Simon the Rat? <laughs> you know, from, from Charlotte's Web. Uh, yeah, and this one, I think I could fill him out with a little more uh, fiber fill and uh, get him chubbier. I just realized <laughs> comparatively, he was kind of narrow. Yeah, so... Uh, all my little chubby little hedgehog pin cushions are good to go. So that's our project for today, our little hedgehog pin cushion. <gasps> Thumbnail. Um, he's adorable. I love him. I don't know. What do I want to name him? Hubert? Oh, he's cute. Anyway, um, I will include the pattern down below in the comments. There'll be a link. Uh, it is just a hand-drawn thing, so don't expect anything too fancy, too special. I'm not gonna like AutoCAD it and get out my architect's degree that I don't have and you know draw you something fabulous and wonderful. I'm just gonna do what I can do. So, <laughs> so um, let me know if you make a hedgehog pin cushion, go ahead and Instagram it, hashtag LazyLimaDIY, and let me know how you like the project. Thank you so much for watching. I invite you to uh, subscribe. I invite you to hit that like button. Button? Button? What? 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 Am I even speaking English now? Yeah. <sighs> we do. I invite you to subscribe to Lazy Lima DIY, where I have projects like this and others and cooking and whatever, uh, just whatever uh, hits my fancy. And uh, I put them up haphazardly whenever I feel like it. Yeah, I, I hope uh, you're safe and healthy and your loved ones are safe and healthy too. So thank you so much for watching and until the next time, peace out. <laughs>